From the airport to the drug court, their huge drug stash police are linking to a former fellow officer. Also ahead, Wood has residents in southwestern New Providence in the dumps again. And the afternoon discovery which has launched a police investigation. The National Report starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This segment of the news is brought to you by BTC, powered by Lime. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kishla Adderley. And I'm Chris Saunders. Topping the news tonight, facing a drug charge and discharged from duty, a former female police officer appeared in court today for arraignment. She was arrested at the Linden Pinland International Airport yesterday, where she was stationed. Fern Carey was at the court for the arraignment. Former female police constable, 27-year-old Tony Sweeting, was arraigned in the Nassau Street Magistrate Court Monday, along with her 33-year-old brother, Delano Sweeting, in connection with that Friday cocaine drug bust at the Linden Pinling International Airport. The Coral Harbor residents were charged together with taking preparatory steps to export cocaine from the Bahamas. They're also facing possession of dangerous drugs with intent to supply, conspiracy to export dangerous drugs, and conspiracy to possess dangerous drugs with intent to supply. They both pleaded not guilty to the four charges and were denied bail. However, Deputy Chief Magistrate Carolita Bethel informed them that they can apply to the Supreme Court to be released on bail. Meantime, Tony Sweeting and Delano Sweeting are expected back in court on October 11th. Attorney Ian Cargill and Tonic Lewis are defending them. Fern Carey, ZNS Network News. It was Police Commissioner Allison Greenslade who previewed Sweeting's arraignment today. He told reporters the former constable of five years was officially discharged this morning on a matter unrelated to the drug charge. This as he sought to disassociate good officers from a minority of rogue officers dismissed in recent years. To date, 30 officers have been terminated, that is, discharged from the force by, by me. Eight officers were discharged in 2010, 13 in 2011, six in 2012, and for the year to date, three. In most of those cases, there were 21C, that is, officers ceasing to become efficient police officers and who the commissioner deemed could not continue to serve in the public's interest, which is, is clear in law. I have a mandate in law that I can certainly fulfill. And some have been uh, recommended for dismissal, having been convicted by our internal tribunal or having been convicted by a criminal court. Police Commissioner Greenslade has also hinted that the police may be ready to, at any moment to prosecute gamblers. Today he said that persons who are gambling should, quote, be very careful. Observers have been monitoring the action or inaction of police since an injunction barring police from prosecuting web bosses who are in the meantime engaged in a legal battle challenging the legality of gambling. The commissioner says instead of wondering when the police will act, residents should just stop participating in the illegal activity. I am encouraging people to obey the laws of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, and if you're gambling, you should stop, yes. And the issue to say that, well, you know, um, this, this is basically what I do, has no validity in the face of the law. I, I, you just have to hear my point. If I'm going to be successful in mounting an operation, I can't tell people when. I have to do what I perceive to be the right things at the right times. And I don't want you to, to, to take that lightly. The police commissioner is also very concerned about what he called erroneous reports being made about the Royal Bahamas Police Force. A letter to the editor that was published in the Tribune newspaper recently referred to police officers as terrorists, something the commissioner sees as a threat to national security. It is a sad day when in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, decent Bahamian citizens like myself, my executive team and all members of the Royal Bahamas Police Force 
can be referred to as terrorists in the discharge of our duties. Whoever said that is wrong. It, it is it's totally unacceptable. It is rude, it is disrespectful, and it demonstrates no regard for us as a people, certainly for us as an organization. I'm very bothered by those comments, and I now speak publicly to it. Totally wrong. Totally disrespectful. Has national security implications. Police officers cannot be referred to as terrorists. Those are dangerous words, and I'm very, very bothered by it. I will certainly I'll speak with my minister later this morning, and as necessary, we'll speak to the Right Honourable Prime Minister to register what I've said publicly, very firmly, privately. It is wrong. It should never have happened. It should never have been said. If Zulu police are looking into a huge drug find shortly after 1 o'clock this afternoon, police on the island, along with drug enforcement unit officers and OPBAT officials, found some 42 bales of suspected marijuana in the bushes of Bahamas Sound. The drugs weigh more than 1,000 pounds. So far, no arrests. Residents in western and southwestern New Providence awoke to a smoky atmosphere this morning, but a dump fire dwindled to a smolder today, though shifting winds carried thick gray clouds of smoke into several nearby communities. Today, Charisma Robinson took a trip inside the burning dump to see how officials are dealing with this lingering menace. Officials don't know exactly what started the fire at the city dump late Friday night and had difficulties getting to it right away due to windy conditions. Today, the blaze has been brought under control, but it's left a series of problems for residents and businesses in the area. Who do I submit my doctor bills to? Last year I paid them myself, but uh, do they go to the government or to the dump? The lingering concern is forcing area residents and business owners to sound the call again for the site to be removed. They say they've been dealing with the health hazard for far too long. Last year I had been away on vacation for a week, came back the same time to a burning dump, ended up with uh, bronchitis and an upper respiratory infection. I just don't know, I don't know when it's going to end, you know. I really don't think people should be living in that area. That's how I feel. But it's the dump. And I don't think there's nothing much they could do about it. We have to get a, a considerable amount of fines and try to use them as exhaust to try to get them out of the building because once they're within the warehouse, it affects the staff totally. But the bills of smoke won't be going anywhere anytime soon. Thomasina Wilson, senior deputy director with the Department of Environmental Health Services, says give it about a week. Because these kinds of things take time because we are trying to use the escalators to open pockets and flood it with water and then once it gets kind of muddy then you, you close it in and that will eliminate having, to, having a blaze up um, in the near future. Now when it comes to prevention, Wilson says it's easier said than done. She says due to combustion and all of the other things that takes place at a landfill, it's hard to prevent these fires. She says though, locking down some of the access points on the site and monitoring its perimeter could help. Charisma Robinson, ZNS Network News. skies and pockets of showers and thunderstorms affecting parts of the northwest Bahamas ahead of a frontal system but outside of our studios just now we have cloudy skies temperatures 78 degrees relative humidity 74 percent your winds are out of the east southeast at five knots barometric pressure 1014.3 millibars it's 29.95 inches and it is steady but stay tuned temperatures around the family islands travel and boating forecast is still to come to come tonight, what police know so far about a body found floating today. And will the Kofi Goodman jury stand? We'll tell you what a judge decided after the break. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news is brought to you by Lux Men's Warehouse.